חד פעמים. Judaism was always a very big part of my life. It's a big part of my identity. And after spending a year in Israel, uh, before I started college, I've never felt less Jewish. So this week we're talking about Jews who, because of Israel, don't feel very Jewish anymore. I've never felt less connected to my religion than when I was in Israel. Because my Jewish identity is about justice, freedom, and equality. And I, for a really long time, struggled with how that connects to Israel. And it can't at this moment. So in the opinion of this relatively intelligent lady from, uh, from America, well, freedom, justice, and equality doesn't exist in the one country in the Middle East which practically screams it from the tops of every one of its mountains. I, I just don't get her, but she may not get me or many people like me in our opinions and our belief that the Jewish people um, are living in Israel and the two things are very much connected. Don't I have the right for a Jewish country? No, no. Just like I don't have the right to live in a white-only country. No. Are we afraid it will be the end of Israel? No, 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 no. It is the end of a Jewish supremacist Israel. It is the end of an Israel that privileges Jewish people above all others. That is what we are fighting for. That's just wow, you know, white supremacists, etc. I mean, there's nothing supreme about being Jewish. It's just, frankly, we want to be left alone to live in peace. That's, that's all any of us have ever wanted. Um... And the, the reality is that there are Jews that have been demonstrating against um, Israeli actions for many, many years, particularly outside uh, the Israeli embassy in Britain. We can totally condemn what's been happening. We can send the murders. And I'm just glad to be here today to, to let you know what we think. We're absolutely appalled. And it's absolutely not in our name. And we're appalled by the um, propaganda coming out of the Israeli government. All types of Jews, in fact, um, for all types of reasons, uh, against Israel, fundamentally. Remember, we in the religious Jewish community, we didn't choose to have a state. We do not believe that God requires or wants us to have a state. He is perfectly capable of protecting us if he wants to protect us. We don't need to have an army. We don't need to have tanks. We don't need to have newspapers or anything to protect us. God Almighty will protect us. Many, many diverse opinions on this. And uh, religious Jews, um, not just in small numbers outside the, um, the Israeli embassy in Britain. While the rest of the square was overcrowded with tens of thousands of participants, the first speaker began by expressing the pain of Orthodox Jews of the past decades since the establishment of the Zionist state, the state of Israel because it is absolutely forbidden for Jews to rule over any part of the Holy Land ever since God sent the Jews into exile. And probably one of the most difficult voices to listen to would be that of the, the Jewish daughter, the Israeli girl who effectively feels that she cannot support her own state, her own army, in their battle for defense of Israel. We are Israeli conscientious objectors. That means we refuse to serve in the Israeli army because they are occupying another people, the Palestinians. Palestinian kids can't go to school because of checkpoints. Or even get health care. Many young Palestinians go to prison for no reason. A lot of them have been killed or their homes demolished. The government says this policy is keeping us safe. But denying Palestinians their basic human rights puts us all in danger. It's illegal. It's wrong. It's immoral. It's against my personal beliefs. Now, I don't have a daughter who I'm asking to go and fight for their country. I don't have the even citizenship right now in the state of Israel. So who am I really to speak to those Jews who feel this particular way that they don't recognize or they don't? want to support or they just they don't want to be part of the Jewish state in the way I feel they ought to be I guess I have all along thought that Israel this country that I love and admire so much is just that it's a country um, like Britain like Australia like America it has borders it is recognized throughout the world as a state 
Um, and to understand how difficult that can be for some people to uphold and, and continually recognise, I guess I find hard and I find tough. But I have to recognise it. Um, and I also want to show them this beautiful place that uh, that I cherished so much and that I yearned to live in at some point and necessarily uh, want to see grow from strength to strength. Uh, I, I see advantages for the Arabs, the Palestinians, the rest of the world and not least of all the Jewish people. If we all pull together, not as Jews have differences of opinion, but as we'll come to talk about in weeks to come, the interests of the common Jew, because that is really what Israel truly represents. And as we close today, the conference for the Labour Party is underway here in Melbourne, um, during which a vote will be put to the floor, many votes probably, uh, motions that effectively recognise the Palestinian state. Uh, there are many of us that um, perhaps not members of the Labour Party, but certainly Jews that feel it is, is not the time to be recognising the Palestinian state, um, because that will simply uh, push the Israelis and the Palestinians further apart and into effectively into war. Um, it, it simply requires the Palestinians to agree to come to the table, um, as the Israelis must too, um, under circumstances which we refer to as bilateral, um, bilateral talks. And that is the way forward with peace. It's the way all the other conflicts have been resolved around the world. And it is the only way that we will resolve the Palestinian-Israeli uh, um, crisis. Um, so ultimately, we can't even talk about peace whilst we've got Hamas. And Australia recognised that Hamas is um, a terrorist organisation. And yet, somehow, they want to recognise the Palestinian states. The Gaza area, bear in mind, is governed by Hamas. So to me, I think we ought to be recognising the fact that the Australian government needs to do as much as they can to remove Hamas from government and instate a, a, a political group that we can actually negotiate with. Perhaps that would be better use of their time. Criticize Israel, that's cool, but if you support Hamas, you're a fool. Unless you want radical Islamic rule and stockpiles of rockets at your kid's school. Remember, they send their own people out scrapped with suicide bombs blowing up in their lap. You think they seek peace? That's a bunch of crap. They just want to wipe Israel off the map. Let me start off slow so you don't get lost. Palestinians are not the same as Hamas. Though they may live in the same location, Hamas is a terrorist organization. They might call themselves freedom fighters but they're just like the Taliban and Al-Qaeda using lethal force against Arabs, Jews and anyone else who disagrees with their views. Due to their violence they have been banned from Jordan, Canada and Japan, the whole EU plus the UK, Australia, Egypt and the USA. But in Israel the situation is harder. They kidnap Israelis and use them to barter. If one murders Jews he's raised as a martyr. Just take a look at Hamas's own charter. They want Islam controlled the whole Middle East, two states don't interest them in the least. So tell me how Jews are supposed to make peace with the enemy who just wants to see us deceased. You want to criticize Israel, that's cool, but if you support Hamas, you're a fool. Unless you want radical Islamic rule and stockpiles of rockets at your kid's school. Remember, they send their own people out strapped with suicide bombs blowing up in their lap. You think they seek peace? That's a bunch of crap. They just want to wipe Israel off the map. Gazans are living in poverty, but Hamas just went on a building spree of underground tunnels through which they planned to unleash attacks on Israeli land. They used 80,000 tons of cement, a valuable resource which could have went to development of new apartments to help Palestinians who can't pay the rent. Iran has given them hundreds of millions, but they shoot it all at Israeli civilians. Their rockets get blown by the Iron Dome while their own people are starving at home. It's even worse on the battlefield where they wield civilians like human shields. Israel uses weapons when its people are threatened, but Hamas uses people to protect its weapons. If I was from Gaza, I would be pissed. But to be honest, I wouldn't resist because Hamas's rivals all wind up dead, tortured before they get shot in the head. So you want to criticize Israel, that's cool, but if you support Hamas, you're a fool. Unless you want radical Islamic rule and stockpiles of rockets at your kid's school. Remember, they send their 
own people out strapped with suicide bombs blowing up in their lap. You think they seek peace? That's a bunch of crap. They just want to wipe Israel off the map.